Yeah, so when I was preparing, um, I had got questions. I'd looked online on the NHS website for nurses going into like interviewing for just nursing jobs because I thought they would be quite good to see in case there was anything that was to do with like skills, qualities, the six C's. And then we done a Zoom call and we kind of acted like it was a group interview. Um, but I would recommend if you're going to do mock interviews, treat them like a real interview. Don't just treat them like, oh, it's just my friends. Like, and I learned a lot from it because other people's answers were really insightful. Because um, sometimes you can think, oh, no, my answer's right. But when you hear someone else's, you're like, oh, that's actually quite good. And I think nursing is genuinely a lot of the time. It's like, that's great. Your opinion's valid. But also there's this opinion. So I did find that very beneficial before uh, the actual real group interviews because I'd imagine not just the interview not just the unis we interviewed for I'd imagine that's quite common to do group interviews um so I would definitely group interviews mock interviews prepare your answers and just be ready for curveballs <laughs> yeah. what about yourself how did you prepare um, Gemma I looked through the NMC codes of practice. Um, mm -hmm. That was one of the things alongside, obviously, the six C's. But yeah. I actually read quite a lot of of that. Um, I found writing it out also kind of getting your muscle memory to remember yeah. what you what you were going to be seeing, um, and being able to, to let that roll off the tongue because I knew that nerves were getting the better of me. I also find the one thing that I probably would recommend for that is at the start of the year, when you are in class, ask questions, push yourself to ask the questions, push yourself to question the questions, um, because that then builds up your confidence enough to be able to sit and have a conversation with your possible future. Um, don't don't be scared to, to ask because the lecturers in general are amazing um but also like all the swap staff as well they're all really approachable you can email them and things like that and if you've got a question just just ask it yeah. the, there, there's something it. called the star technique and i don't know if you've heard of it before lauren it's like an interview mm -hmm. thing um mm -hmm. and i swore by that when i was writing my personal statement um and i learned that years ago when i was doing an interview like an actual proper interview for a job um and I remember that was what I had used quite a lot of to be able to refer back to. And I feel like that did help also in the interviews as well. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's always start, middle and end. Um, and I think I done that in my personal statement. I would massively advise to start where you've begun and then end where you want to be and I kind of use that because there's a question in one of your interviews and it's why you want to be a nurse and I think that is the most important question you're going to answer in all of your interviews and I think if you have that prepared and you are confident with your answer then all the other ones are kind of like mini debates but that's the question you want to go in there knowing like you asked me why I want to be a nurse and I'm going to tell you and I, I do believe that that mechanism yeah. that you've just said is such a good point to use. Yeah. And there is when you would bring in your life experience, um, any anything that's happened within your life that's made you go down that route. And also anything that you've researched into the background of why adult nursing, because a lot of people would be going for learning disability nursing, child nursing, and everyone had kind of an individual route that they wanted to go to and a reason why. So I do think it's very important to specify why that route. Yeah. Um, I actually got a job in care. Um, probably about three months, six months into the swap course, um, just for that backup and to also get the experience, um, because I'd never had any care experience prior, apart from you know looking after family or, you know whatever it might be, hospital appointments and things like that, um, and like I never had any hands-on experience. Um, my little sister, she's actually a nurse in any. Um, and so I've watched her go through her journey of becoming a nurse and that was a total change of career for her as well um, and it was kind of a thing where 
I've always wanted to do it, but the time was never ever right. Um, and I think it's important to us to understand that although the time isn't right, when you want to do it, it's important that you know that when the time is right, you can do it. It's approachable. Um, yes, it's scary. Yes, it's hard work, but the long term goal is going to be massive in comparison. And I've I would say that's definitely something that does definitely help is that, you know, if you get a little bit of hands on experience and you know a little bit about, you know, the job opportunities and things like that and think about what you want to do when you do eventually qualify, whether it's adult, child, learning disability, um, mental health, think about where you want to be once you qualify um, and have a look at job roles, things like that, things of what it entails um, and kind of kind of grow with that and have that in mind. Yeah, because when I originally started, I'd always wanted to be a mental health nurse um, just purely through um, family background and like that's kind of where my nursing desire started, I suppose, from watching my mum care for my uncles that suffered from mental health and then when I went into care work myself it was more like elderly um, and obviously with elderly you get dementia so it's still kind of on the mental health kind of um, side but it wasn't until I started the course I actually researched more into like job prospects career and it, it actually swayed me to adult nursing because adult nursing is more of like a platform where you can dive into all kind of nursing because there's more jobs so you're not like pigeonholed to one I mean don't get me wrong every type of nursing is just as valued but it was it was my own research that made me think actually Lauren I think you'd be better off as adult because then you can decide then later on if you want to go to adult nursing but with mental health or if you want to be in with children or you know so I think it is a good a good base to always research first before you think oh, I just want to do that because that's just what I've seen um I would say that the qualities that I would bring to nursing in general would be my ability to put myself in someone else's shoes and not really judge them um treat them as I see them not like the, any background and always just have open communication because I think as long as you communicate you can't really go wrong you know, if someone's always aware of your intentions, I think, you know, there'll always be the right intentions. I would also massively um, encourage to reach out to people within your class, because a lot of the time we're all feeling the same stresses and we all became really close. And it was mainly because of the struggles. Um, yeah. It's funny, you don't reach out if you're fine, but it's, you, you should just reach out. But everyone seems yeah. to reach out more when they're struggling. But I would just recommend finding your like who you can bond with and just always having like that support. Like even if you're meeting up to go over your interview questions, answers, um, even if like you want feedback. So I think a lot of us were really good at giving feedback, like constructive feedback, and we were really good at taking it. I mean, the personal statements yeah. sometimes got a lot of <laughs> feedback from them um, and we were good at taking them. And I think you develop a lot from hearing where you could do better I think it is nice to have like positive feedback from other people because I think sometimes you don't really I, I mean I know myself I don't ever celebrate anything like that I win at you know like even if it's a small win like this year I've really made a point of trying to because you always think oh no but there's something else to complete next but really we should slow down and celebrate everything we achieve and I do think other people telling you look Lauren you've done this that and the other and you come across like this way it is a positive and it can make you feel better and then you think oh actually I can sell myself yeah I think back when we were writing yep. getting ready for interviews and it was a case where there was a lesson or something like that where you had to sit in a group and because by that point you you kind of know each other a bit better mm -hmm. than what you did because it's in the second block um I think that would have really actually helped because for me, I mean, I was turning around to my partner and I was like, Andrew, what am I like as a person? Like, am I am I a good person? Am, am, I, am, am I okay? Like, and he's like, no, you're the devil in disguise. No, he didn't actually say that. <laughs> he's like, why are you asking me? <laughs> but yeah, I think, I, I do genuinely think that that would be a great thing for any 
so option or any student for yeah. that matter or anybody going on to look to go to university or any other to be honest anywhere in jobs anything at all it does really come in handy um yeah. I find it really humbling actually and I'm like oh. we like our group were really lucky that we were all very very passionate about going into that and I think mm-hmm. we really helped each other and nurtured each other in getting there um so yeah I definitely think it was it was quite important to have that but I would definitely say to anyone that's at the stage we were at in block two just keep pushing through because you will see at the end of it there is light at the end of the tunnel (laughs) yeah I I would say you know definitely keep pushing but just remember to take a break don't sit for hours yes. on end staring at a blank screen with mind fog. Don't do it. You're not going to get anywhere. Go away, have a cup of tea, have a bath, do whatever it is that you need to do to bring yourself to calm yourself down and go back to it even the next again morning once you've had a sleep. Um, because napping for me was a definite help. <laughs> I napped all the time. <laughs> I literally slept all the time. <laughs> And then I'd wake up and I'd be bright and fresh and I'd be like, oh, this is easy. Just tap my way.